for objective two, you will be able to use the intermediate value theorem. In the picture here, you can see some sort of road sign about there being change ahead. And I, I chose this picture because you've seen the intermediate value theorem in some kind of form, and it was about sign changes. So let's take a look at how you would have seen it before calculus. Example six, assume f of x is a continuous function. What can you conclude about the location of one of the zeros of f of x? So we just have a table of values here. And uh, what I want you to notice, take into account here, are the y values. So if we look at the y values here, in order to move from the negative side here, from negative 6, negative 12, up here to 28, I have to pass 0 in between those two things because the function is continuous. There's no holes there. There's no gaps. There's no asymptotes. So you have to go from negative 12 to 28 by passing 0. Okay, so that's how you would have used it in another class. And you might have even called it the location principle because it was all about finding the location of zeros from some sort of table of values or maybe even a graph to help you like zero in using, say, the rational root theorem or something like that. But in general, like in calculus, it doesn't have to be zeros. It could be any number we want it to be. So if I look at the x values from 3 to 4, look, we're going from y value of 150 to 390. That means someplace in between here, I must have hit, let's say, 300. So in between x equals 3 and 4, there must be a y value of 300 in here. And that's basically the intermediate value theorem, which we sometimes call the IVT. I guarantee it will be on your AP exam in multiple instances. Let's take a look at it. If f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, where f of a and f of b are not equal, and k is any number between f of a and f of b, then there exists at least one number c in the open interval from a to b, such that f of c is equal to k. Okay, let's pause here for a second, and let's kind of try to digest each of the individual parts because right now it seems kind of intimidating but we can break it up and make sense of it so the first part is about continuity has to be continuous on some sort of closed interval from a to b so let's look at our graph i can see very clearly from a to b on the x-axis from a to b this closed interval now this graph is very definitely continuous there's no holes, there is no jump discontinuities, there's no asymptotes. So that satisfies the first part, that f is continuous on some sort of closed interval. The second part is that our y values at the endpoints cannot be the same. So I can see also very clearly that f of a up here, not the same thing as f of b. I need that to be true because I'm finding a y value, that's this k here, that's between those two. I cannot find a number that's in between these two if they're the same number, right? So I'm going to randomly choose in, in between these two some y value, which I will call k, like this. Okay, so now what the intermediate value theorem is saying, under those conditions, we have a continuous function over some sort of closed interval, like we have here, where the y values aren't the same. I pick a y value in between those two things, and I am guaranteed an x value between a and b that's going to give me this k value that's what this is saying so for example on this one not only do i get it once or twice i get it three times however the intermediate value theorem is only guaranteeing one time right this one just happened to be three okay so here's a question for you what happens if i violate one of the conditions like for example continuity we'll take a look at what uh oh, where are you going? Take a look at what I just did here. I put a jump discontinuity in here. So I violated the condition that it was continuous that was right there, right? I have a jump discontinuity here. So I am able to choose a k value that violates the conclusion here that, oh, this particular k value, whatever it is, there's no x value that corresponds to it. Sure, I can still pick one. Let's say, for example, I picked it right up here. There is an x value. But this is saying that it is 
possible, I am not guaranteed this particular K value, whatever it is, right? So I, if I go back to it's being continuous, no matter where you choose in between F of A and F of B, this K value, you always, always get a corresponding uh, X value. So it basically means that on a continuous function, F of X is going to take on every single Y value in between those two. Right? And that's how we were able to use it to say, predict the location of one particular zero. All right, here is another question for you. For a continuous function, does the intermediate value theorem tell us where to find that C value? Well, it just gives us a range. It just says it's between A and B, but it doesn't tell us exactly where that number is. In order to figure it out, we'll have to maybe do a little bit of algebra. This is an example of something that is called an existence theorem.